Somewhere along the way in, in the growth from, from 15 to, to uh, uh, 1,000, we did get good at new business. <clears throat> and so I think that's why I got invited to talk here. Um, we were so good at new business that we never lost a pitch. And, um, and we believe that in the agency. We still believe we've never lost a pitch. And, and the reason why is because we're sort of Buddhist hippies. And, and uh, we think everything happens for a reason. So anytime um, we, would, we, would, uh, we would lose a pitch, um, which we never did. But if we, <laughs> if we were ultimately not selected, um, we were really comfortable with the idea that there was a reason why. And, and, and over and over, we could find the reason why. One that I remember distinctly was Land Rover. Really excited about Land Rover, pitching it as hard as I could, working on it. Um, and, and in the, but in the back of my mind, the whole time I'm working on it, I'm thinking, but do I want to sell SUVs? You know, it'd be really cool to sell a little car. You know, that would be neat. And, and we don't get Land Rover. We go to the last pitch. We don't get Land Rover. I hear later from, from a friend of mine at the agency that got it that the reason why I didn't get it, I didn't get it. The reason why we didn't get it, well, it was my fault that we didn't get it. I wore jeans to the final presentation, right? So, so that, was a, that is a great reason not to get a piece of business, <laughs> I think. Because <clears throat> I don't have any other pants. Um, <laughs> Um, and, and, and so then many came on, then many calls, and we had no idea there was even the idea of many coming to the U.S. And, and so we thought, we were so excited when many called, and, and, and we realized, we can do it, we don't have Land Rover. Um, and so there, was a, so there was a reason. Another one that, that, that I just recalled uh, last night is um, we pitched Church's Fried Chicken. I don't know if Church is a national brand, I think it may be regional. But we pitched Church's Fried Chicken, didn't get it. I mean, it was terrible. It was one of those presentations where, I love these presentations too. You can tell I'm kind of weird, contrarian. <laughs> but you know those presentations that are going so bad that you just feel like, let's, let's fold it up, you know? <laughs> like, you guys have heard enough. <laughs> what I do, I go into the reverse mode where I'll read every line of copy. When it gets, the worse it gets, the more I'm like, you're gonna listen to this, because some people worked really hard. <clears throat> so churches was like that. And, I, and, uh, and not long after that, um, Burger King called. So, so, you know, we do have these conflicts, and I agree, we should get rid of the idea of conflicts. We, we love it when, when uh, when we have clients in con. Domino's and Burger King has been really fun and, and that was one of the things that I was trying to make a mission of my career is to get rid of conflicts. I think it's the, 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 big, the big thing that, that, that y'all need to do is not point at each other when there are these conflicts. Just, you know, let it go. It's good for everybody. We won't, we won't use that as a, as a way to angle. Um, eventually, we actually had that state of nirvana that agencies dream about, right? Where you get pieces of business without a review. And um, the only thing I want to say about that is it's not that great. I, I, I lived in that for a couple years at least. And what I, there are some great things about new business that you don't realize because we have to do it. But having to step out of it, being able to step out of it, um, there were, we, we stepped back into it. We said, we're not going to take any more pieces of business without a review, which is kind of weird. Um, and, and the reason why is because it's like an arranged marriage. You, you, you wind up in this relationship, and we could feel that the date as the work was approaching, it was like we were about to push the client off a cliff. You know, um, They were going to get to see the thing that they were going to have to do, and it, it's not a good environment for, for buying great work. The, there isn't a lot of stress other than the selection thing, but there's a choice in, in a pitch. And so I think every agency is different, but generally our best work was pitch work that then just went on. You know? We've had, for, for Burger King, we, we ran for, for probably three years, we ran on work that we put into the pitch. And, um, and so, so uh, 
it's really important. And then the other thing I missed about was the R&D, right? It's the, it's the time where we do our R&D, where we think about where the industry's going, where we think about new stories, where, we, where we're able to, to um, do it exactly the way we'd want to do it without a lot of interference. And, and not having that um, as, as a process, we didn't have another process. We didn't have, like, we, you know, we're, we're not the kind of industry that then puts aside R&D money and then just lets that run and then incorporates it. So, you know, I, I like to think of uh, pitching as R&D, really. And, and it's that kind of expense. It's no different. Um, so, the, you know, what is the secret to, to new business? I think that we've been getting at it this, this morning a lot. Um, we cheated. We cheated at new business, and we cheated. Every, you know, my my father-in-law likes to call it outmaneuvering, because he finds cheating offensive. Um, and we're taught, you know, I I I think uh, we're taught to uh, to see it as offensive. That cheating isn't isn't such the way to go. And it's it's interesting because our because our current school system was designed way back to create factory workers. You guys are definitely not factory workers. You, you don't want the mindset of factory workers. Yet you probably were schooled as a factory worker. I was schooled in Montessori. And um, it's kind of not, that doesn't make me, it makes me lucky, I think, actually. It doesn't, doesn't mean that other people can't think in the way that, but I put my kids in, into Montessori. Um, what's going on here? Got a whole, um, I'm worried. Uh, so I put my kids in the, in the Montessori. It's funny that uh, that uh, I was at a, I was at a camp that they sent the kids to, and it wasn't a Montessori camp. It was just like this weekend camp, and I went to uh, chaperone. And the count counselors were there, and I was I was talking to them, and and kind of you know having fun. I'm like, so what's it you know, what's it like? Like it, you know, how do you like having the Montessori kids? And they're like. Uh, it's different, you know, it's definitely different. And, and what was different for them was that they, they didn't have the, the, the follower leader mentality. What happens is you wind up in, you know, groups of, of nine kids or ten kids, and all of them are trying to lead. And none of them step in to follow, right? Um, I kind of, well, it made for a really bad camp day, but, <clears throat> but I think long term it's going to be good. Um, so who makes the rules and, and why don't they want you to cheat, you know? You got, you're, you're grown up people now, right, you know? And still we're in this culture where there's a lot of people that don't want you to cheat, and I alluded to that before. The, the people that don't, don't want you to cheat are, 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 well, it's me probably at this point, right? Cheating is breaking the rules that the previous generation set forth to protect their wealth. Why did the school system get designed the way it was designed? It was designed by, by their early industrialists to protect their wealth. They didn't want new innovators. They wanted factory workers, you know? I, right now, again, I stepped out of it, so that's why I'm telling you the truth. But <laughs> we, 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 as an industry, at age, there's a lot, there's a lot that's trying to protect the, the old way. Right, and so um, it's difficult to break out of that. It's difficult to set, take this this culture that you're in and say, "I'm going to step out of this culture, and I'm going to do it, and I'm going to be alone." And it and it's lonely, and it's uncomfortable, and you're going to be in. You know, we can mock what the new business meeting is like right now. That part we see. We can see our culture. But stepping out of our culture and redesigning the new presentation where you're going to say things that no one else said, do you really want to look, potentially seem that stupid? Right? So five agencies have gone before. They've all said the same thing. We know that's going to happen. And then here you come, and you're going to say something completely different. Some people are, are going to like that, and a lot of people are going to think you're an idiot. Um, I actually don't think that's true. But that's the fear. That's the fear. The reality is people will actually think you're smart.